Ani bojo. Beje guabshke mengen gibe te gabon dis nakaz makwan dorum penetanguishin in dunjnaba inwa trenton and dal nishnabe koe o day. I just introduced myself in anishnabe mwen. I said um, hello, my name is Beje Gwabshke Mangan Gabo, and my English name is Deb Sainama. I'm Bear Clan. I said I'm originally from Penetanguishin and that I live in Trenton and that I have an Anishinaabe heart. I was an elementary school teacher for 30 years and then I retired for five years, six years. And now I work at the Faculty of Education as the elder in residence. Um, my job there is to keep our students balanced. Truth and reconciliation to me means that we're all making a concerted effort to right the wrongs of the past. And it's not a one-sided um, deal. It, it's not up to solely the indigenous people to right these wrongs and it's not solely resting on the shoulders of the rest of the Canada of Canada to do this because we have to form partnerships and work it together so in, in order for us to truly reconcile we all have to be at the table and we all have to be talking and there has to be a willingness on the part of um, Indigenous people and non-Indigenous people. So a lot of it does begin with the truth. It begins with education. And we need to educate people about what has happened in the past. And once people are educated, then we can work on changing the outcomes of the past. For non-Indigenous educators, it's important to learn some of the history of Indigenous peoples because history is always told from the perspective of the conqueror. And so they've heard one side of history, but they haven't heard necessarily our sides of the stories. So I, and history is a story, so there's always more than one side. It's, I, I think it's important for educators to learn to take um, courses, to go to lectures, to read books by Indigenous authors. I, I think it's important to learn as much as you can as an educator. I don't think that you have to be an expert in order to be an educator. I think that you have to have that willingness to learn about Indigenous people. and. I would suggest that educators should start by including Indigenous authors in their classrooms, like reading storybooks to the little ones and reading novels or plays or poetry by Indigenous authors, by watching films by Indigenous um, directors, by including Indigenous knowledge into every aspect of the curriculum so that it's not seen as an add-on, that it's just a natural part of the day that we're going to read and it just so happens that the novel we read is by an Indigenous author. I think that as educators we also do reading ourselves, like we have our professional readings to do and we also have our leisure readings. I, I would suggest reading professional um, books and writings and musings by Indigenous authors as well, like making a habit of lis listening to podcasts by Indigenous people to make your own self more aware of Indigenous realities and to um, open up avenues that perhaps you haven't wandered down before. Um, when I speak to educators about Indigenous education and truth and reconciliation, a lot of them say, well, I don't really know anything, so I'm afraid to be disrespectful. And my advice is, as long as you're approaching it with a good heart, then that's being respectful. And it's better to do or say something than to say nothing, like to acknowledge the Indigenous 
presence presence within your classroom. Our indigenous students are the fastest growing population in Canada. So cultural appropriation, we hear a lot of talk about that lately and people are never really sure what it is. And for me, it means that somebody is profiting off of something from our culture that they don't necessarily have the teachings or the background to produce. So I, I see a lot of cultural appropriation when I walk into some stores and I see dream catchers that are made in other countries. When uh, myself as an Ojibwe person, I know that that's part of my culture and it's my culture, the Ojibwe that have that dream catcher and the legends that go with it. I think that if teachers, for example, make dream catchers in their class with their students, just for the sake of dream, making the dream catchers, then that's cultural appropriation. And a lot of educators will tell you to avoid making dream catchers. If you have an elder that's going to come in and share the background to the dream catchers and you're going to make them appropriately and in a safe way and putting your good energy into it and acknowledging the spirit that's in the beads and in the feathers, etc., and acknowledging the story in the presence of a knowledge keeper that can share that with you and ideally an Ojibwe because it's from the Ojibwe tradition that we have these dream catchers, then I think that's an okay thing to do in your classroom, but to just do it yourself, I would not suggest that. Um, if an Ojibwe knowledge keeper or elder has shared those teachings with you, then, and you've asked for permission to share that with your class, then I, I think that is an okay thing to do if you've gotten permission from someone to build the dream catchers, but also, like beforehand, go through all of the background history of. So, so that you carry all of that history with it and you're not just making a dream catcher because it's a nice craft. It's important that we share with each other and, and learn, like not just think, oh, you're different than me, I don't want to learn about you. I, I think it's important for indigenous people to share their knowledge, but also learn about non-indigenous cultures and the same thing for non-indigenous people to learn about our cultures and not be afraid of our spirituality. It's, it's not a religion. It's okay to learn um, from us too because a, a lot of indigenous people that I know are very spiritual people and that's part of sharing our land and our spaces and um, our knowledge too.